the most important concepts from uh, some chapters of organic chemistry. Now, what is the name of this benzene connected to a CN group? This question on the Jildhal I took because it is commonly asked and usually students do it the lengthy way. So, tautomerism is exhibited by this. You can see that this is enol form. So, of course, you are going to get pH, then CH2 and then CH double bond O. Here is again 3 carbon is straight chain. So, basically what do you get here? is n hexane poly substitution is a major drawback in which of these reactions this question ozonolysis is a very commonly asked reaction in j so please uh, thoroughly uh, prepare this reaction ozonolysis uh, study this reaction welcome to this video guys in this video we shall discuss the most important concepts from uh, some chapters of organic chemistry so this is a part of our power up series if you have uh, if you guys have not watched any of our videos before please uh, go over to your YouTube channel, uh, subscribe to it, press the bell icon so that you get when our videos are released, okay? And uh, before this, we have conducted three YouTube sessions in chemistry on physical chemistry, part 1, 2 and 3, where in each session I have discussed some questions, right, uh, which uh, cover the major concepts in the chapters of physical chemistry. So today we will uh, start organic chemistry and the chapters that shall be covered in this video today will be general organic chemistry, which you guys know it's a very important chapter to understand GOC and uh, then hydrocarbons, okay? So without delay, let's get started with the first question. So IUPAC nomenclature is something which is, which may not be the most important thing, but it is definitely the most basic thing in organic chemistry, right? So this is one compound that I've taken on the IUPAC nomenclature. So whenever you number your parent chain, then you have to keep something in mind that the functional group gets the lowest possible number, right? So the functional group in this molecule should get the lowest possible number. Now you might wonder that there are multiple functional groups. F to begin with, first there is bromine, haloalkane, right, haloarene here, or phenol, OH, and then amide, right, or uh, not, cyanide, right. So there are basically three groups here. Which one will be given priority? So there is something called priority sequence you guys are familiar with, right. When you do the nomenclature, so there is one OH, there is one CN and then one BR. So which group comes first in the priority sequence? Of course, cyanide, right? So this comes first in the priority sequence. I'll be giving this as number one, right? This as number one. Now, when you have given number one to the functional group, which comes first in the priority sequence, then other groups will be treated as substituents. That means now you will see the lowest locants rule. Now you will not see the remaining groups uh, out of which, uh, which is functional group, which has a higher priority, lower priority, no, right? So you have given one number to it. Now you'll see lowest locants rule, which basically is that you will number the remaining substituents in such a way that they get the lowest set of positions. So this is number one, this is number two, three, four, and this will be number five, okay, right? now irrespective of the numbering of the groups please remember that substituents are always written in alphabetical order so here i will write as 2 bromo right 2 bromo 5 hydroxy you should remember the suffix and the prefix of each functional group right depending upon whether it is treated as a sub uh, functional group or a substituent right so oh as a functional group when it is written it's written as ol right but here it's a substituent, it's being regarded as a substituent, so it will be written as hydroxy. So 2 bromo 5 hydroxy. Now, what is the name of this benzene connected to a CN group? Right? So, of course, this is benzonitrile, right? What will be called benzonitrile? So this will be benzonitrile. Right, so this will be the correct IUPAC name of this compound 2 bromo 5 hydroxy benzonitrile. So, this will be the correct answer. Moving to the next question so, absolute configuration RNS they are also important because they help you identify, uh, distinguish between the chiral carbon atoms. So, this is a Fischer projection of a molecule, and you have to figure out what are the configurations. So, first, please remember that these points represent chiral carbons here, right? This is a chiral carbon. There are two chiral carbons in this molecule. Now, how do you give the nomenclature RNS, right? R for rectus, clockwise, 
as for sinister anti clockwise right left okay so here you are turning to the right here you are turning to the left so rs nomenclature is based on that now what are the rules first thing you see is atomic number right then you see the atomic mass okay then you see the number of atoms okay this uh, successive number of atoms so let us first see so this is carboxylic i'll take the upper half of the molecule this is h this is oh right and this carbon which is connected to one hydrogen and one carbon and one chlorine right so if you ask yourself uh, we have to given uh, we have to give the numbers to these substituents right higher atomic number gets a higher priority so this carbon guys here it is joined to one hydrogen one oxygen and two carbon atoms so of course hydrogen has a lowest number and uh, oxygen has the highest atomic number here so this will get priority 1 and this will get priority 4 all right so this being uh, this having the highest atomic number it will give it will give you priority 1 and this having the lowest atomic number it will be given the lowest uh, uh, priority right so 1 is this 4 is this now both of these are carbon atoms right both of these are carbon atoms so how do we determine you see this carbon is bonded to oxygen atoms right this carbon is bonded to oxygen atoms this carbon is bonded to one chlorine right now please remember that whenever a uh, carbon atom is joined to some you know atoms we write them in decreasing order of atomic number right we write them in decreasing order of atomic number so this carbon this carbon is connected to one chlorine then one carbon and then hydrogen one chlorine one carbon and then hydrogen whereas this carboxylic group uh, it is a phantom atom so i will assume oxygen oxygen and then this is further oxygen so all are oxygen now you compare them one by one so this atom is oxygen this atom is chlorine of course chlorine has higher atomic number than oxygen so this should have higher priority than the carboxylic group right is that clear so this was carbon this was carbon but this carbon was joined to chlorine this carbon is joined to oxygen only so i'll give it to number 2 and i'll give this number 3 now please remember that in fischer projection the lowest priority group should be on the vertical line that is the substituent which you allocate number 4 it should be either at the top or at the bottom right there are multiple ways of doing that uh, what i do is i swap two pairs of groups right for example it is 4 i want to bring it down so i will exchange these two and but that will give me the enantiomer to cancel that out i will exchange these two what i am basically saying here is guys that this is 1 this is 3 this is 4 and this is 2 i will interchange these two so two will come on the left hand side four will come at the bottom but that is an enantiomer right so to nullify that change i'll swap these two also this will be one and this will be three right so 3 1 1 3 and 4 2 and 2 4 now you hide four the lowest priority group 1 to 2 and then 2 to 3 what configuration is that s configuration or configuration you go 1 2 3 we are going clockwise or anti clockwise of course we are going anti clockwise so what configuration is this s right what what configuration is this s so this and this they are ruled out right so this is s configuration so 2 s now the next one whether it is s or r because this compound is not uh, uh, symmetrical right this compound is not symmetrical so we'll have to find that out otherwise uh, we would find out by the symmetry now let us focus on this carbon so this carbon is joined to one hydrogen one chlorine one methyl and another carbon right this carbon is joined to one hydrogen one chlorine one methyl and another carbon which is joined to hydrogen oh and carbon all right so again you will give the priority to these uh, four uh, substituents uh, which will be so this will be chlorine the highest atomic number highest priority 1 and this will be 4 that is sorted right so this is 1 and then this is 4 now this carbon is joined to oxygen also right you write as o c n h but this carbon is joined to hydrogen only of course so this gets higher priority so it will be number 2 and it will be number 3 so number 1 then number 2 number 3 and number 4 these are the position but again your lowest priority group is not on the vertical line okay so we have to bring it on the vertical line so 1 then 3 then 4 and then 2 so this time let us swap it with the group at the top right so 4 will go at the top and 2 will come on the left and 3 will go there and 1 will come here all right again you hide the lowest priority group 
and then see one two three right so one two three what is it is clockwise so the configuration is r right so the configuration is 2s and uh, 3 r that will be the correct answer all right moving to the next question this question on the yield hall i took because it is commonly asked and usually students do it the lengthy way right so what do we do in this Geldals method of estimation of nitrogen? We took 1.4 gram of organic compound, right? All the nitrogen in the compound is converted to ammonia and it was absorbed in 60 ml of M by 10 sulfuric acid. The unreacted acid required 20 ml of M by 10 sodium hydroxide. For complete neutralization, the question is what is the percentage of nitrogen, okay? So, we will use the law of chemical equivalence here that gram equivalent of acid is equal to gram equivalent of base. Very easy. Gram equivalent of acid in any reaction must be equal to the gram equivalent of base. Now, remember what is gram equivalent? Gram equivalent is normality into volume, right? Or simply N factor into molarity into volume right because normality is molarity multiplied by n factor now what are the acids here uh, sulfuric acid is acid sodium hydroxide is a base ammonia is a base right so for sulfuric acid uh, gram equivalent will be n factor which is 2 gram equivalent will be n factor which is 2 because sulfuric acid gives 2 h plus ions molarity is 1 by 10 molarity is 1 by 10 multiplied by volume which is 60 ml multiplied by volume which is 60 ml okay now please remember this is milliliter okay this is milliliter so you will get actually milli equivalents not gram equivalents milli equivalents because you're using milliliter now let us uh, see the base here one base is ammonia i don't know how much is ammonia here none of the information is given so simply gram equivalents of ammonia or precisely milli equivalents of ammonia if you're using milliliters so this I'll write as milli equivalents of ammonia plus for sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide N factor is 1 because it gives 1 hydroxide ion. Volume of NUH is M by 10 that is 1 by 10 and the volume uh, sorry molarity is 1 by 10 okay and the volume is 20 ml. So this is milli equivalent of acid, this is milli equivalent of ammonia, this is milli equivalent of sodium hydroxide. Check that milli equivalent of ammonia it will be 12 right minus 2 right which will be 10 milli equivalents right now you see for ammonia n factor is 1 right let me remind you milli equivalent would be uh, n factor n factor into number of millimoles right number of millimoles so n factor is 1 this is one so milli equivalent of ammonia matlab, millimoles of ammonia that is uh, 10 right milli equivalents of ammonia is 10 so uh, of course number of moles will also be 10 right because n factor is 1 so number of moles of ammonia will be 10 milli mole right number of moles of ammonia or milli moles of ammonia will be 10 so 10 milli mole right now you see one ammonia contains one nitrogen very simple right one ammonia contains one nitrogen. So, if ammonia is 10 millimole, nitrogen will also be 10 millimole. So, nitrogen, it will be 10 millimole, right? Or you can calculate the mass of nitrogen. Mass of nitrogen, it would be 14 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 2 gram, which is basically 0 0.14 gram. Lastly, what is the percentage of nitrogen? Percentage of nitrogen, it will be mass of nitrogen, which is 0 0.14 divided by the mass of compound which is 1.4 right so this is 10% uh, right so that is a correct answer is that clear then next question what is the order of stability of the following carbocations so this question i have selected because it clarifies the basics okay so carbocations let me tell you guys whenever you consider the order of strength okay then always remember that aromaticity is the most powerful stabilizing factor aromaticity is the most powerful stabilizing factor if a carbocation is stabilized by aromaticity then it would likely be the most stable then you have to see the number of resonating structures then second most powerful stabilizing effect is resonance right second most powerful stabilizing factor is resonance 
then comes hyper conjugation right strength wise then comes hyper conjugation and lastly the weakest effect is inductive effect okay now if your positively charged carbon is next to a double bond of course there will be resonance right there will be resonance here how there will be resonance uh, we can shift this pi bond here we can shift this pi bond here so that the other resonance structure that i will get here is this one right so this is resonance stabilized and i can draw this one and this one there are two forms okay this is primary carbocation this is primary carbocation but do i have resonance in this of course not do i have resonance in this of course not because the positively charged carbon is not connected to an atom having lone pair or negative charge or a pi system no right conjugated system no so this carbocation is not stabilized of course by aromaticity or resonance it is stabilized by hyperconjugation which is a weaker effect than resonance right so you should know that the hyperconjugation depends upon the number of alpha hydrogen atoms so there are two alpha hydrogen atoms so it has a lower stability as compared to first one now let us compare third now some student get confused that sir it is stabilized by aromaticity or resonance it is not stabilized by aromaticity it is stabilized by resonance right okay how you see this pi bond shifts here then what do you get double bond here right double bond here and the positive charge here so now tell me in this resonance structure is benzene aromatic of course not right in this resonance structure uh, does benzene have six pi electrons is it aromatic no right okay so of, but of course the number of resonating structures is more because positive charge can be here it can be here it can be at the para position it can be again at the ortho position so second is hyperconjugation is stabilized least stable so second has to be least stable do we get our answer yes of course we do get our answer but let's see the logic now out of first and third it has greater number of resonance structures right so of course third is uh, more stable as compared to first right so the correct answer would be third and then first and then second right third first and second so that is a correct answer then this question which of the following compounds will show the maximum enol content right so you guys know that all those aldehydes and ketones which have alpha hydrogen aldehydes and ketones which have alpha hydrogen they show keto enol tautomerism right they show keto enol tautomerism right all those aldehydes and ketones which show alpha uh, which have at least one alpha hydrogen atom they are likely to show keto enol tautomerism right now please remember that generally for those compounds which have one carbonyl group only one carbonyl group keto form is more stable right because of course in the enol form this gets replaced by a carbon double bond carbon right this gets replaced by a carbon double bond carbon which is a weaker bond so you are replacing a strong bond with a weaker bond so of course in general keto form is more stable than the enol form right but if your compound is beta dicarbonyl or if it has this moiety then of course not only there are now two carbonyl groups which by virtue of their stronger electron withdrawing effect make these uh, methylene uh, more acidic this hydrogen more acidic but also the conjugate base is resonance stabilized right by two carbonyl groups so please remember that those compounds which have two carbonyl groups separated by a ch2 such compounds have more stable enol right that is enol form dominates in case of them so of course which of the following show maximum enol content this not acetone has only one keto group now all of these compounds have two carbonyl groups separated by one ch2 you can see cocco ch2 cocco ch2 and cocco ch2 but then there is counter resonance right you see b is pure it has ch3 co ch2 co ch3 right so it has this moiety but you see in option c and d this side we have an ester linkage right we have an ester linkage right so when you will remove hydrogen okay and carbon will get this negative charge yes it will be stabilized by resonance we are not saying it will not be stabilized but there is counter resonance this oxygen will also involve in resonance right 
which means that the electron withdrawing ability of the carbonyl group of an ester linkage is less than the electron withdrawing ability of a carbonyl group which is be belongs to an aldehyde or ketone. That means this compound will not uh, be as much acid acidic as well as it will not show a lot of enol content as compared to option B. Same happens in option D, right? Here the resonance is even more uh, effective because uh, when you do resonance, nitrogen gets a positive charge and here oxygen gets a positive charge, N plus is more stable than O plus, right? So here also the resulting conjugate base is stabilized by resonance, but there is counter resonance which makes the stabilizing ability of this carbonyl group less for the conjugate base, right? Which means that out of B, C and D, which is uh, most acidic and which will show maximum enol content, of course, this one, right? So please remember those compounds which have this moiety, two carbonyl groups separated by CH2, they have highly stable enol form because of the, you know, the electron withdrawing ability in uh, resonance stabilization of the conjugate base and also intramolecular hydrogen bonding. Then uh, this question C2 is rotated anti-clockwise 120 degree about C2, C3. What is the resulting conformer called? Partial eclipsed, eclipsed, gauche or staggered, right? Let us see. So I think you can see here. This is C2, right? In Newman projection, the carbon which is near you is shown by a dot, right? So that is 2 and the carbon which is on the rear side away from you, okay, that is shown by a circle, this circle white here, that is 3, all right? Now, if C2 is rotated anti-clockwise, C2 means these three substituents is rotated anti-clockwise. So if I go right, that would be clockwise, that would be clockwise. I will not do that, right? I will not do that. So, I will rotate it anti-clockwise, right? I will rotate it anti-clockwise by 120 degree and you can see that when I rotate it by 120 degree, this methyl will come at this position, right? Okay. So, this methyl, this will come here, this hydrogen will go here and this hydrogen will come here. So, basically here there will be hydrogen, here there will be methyl and here there will be hydrogen. Now, you can see there are two bulky groups adjacent to each other. What is this conformation called? It is called Gauche conformation right gauche is a french word which means left so if two adjacent uh, if two bulky groups are adjacent to each other right you guys know if, if these two methyl are opposite now this is uh, anti conformer completely staggered right if this methyl is behind a hydrogen then this is partially eclipsed if this methyl is behind a methyl then it is completely eclipsed and if these two methyl are adjacent this is a staggered conformation but not so much stable because of hysteric strain right so this Gauche conformation, it has lesser stability, right, as compared to completely uh, staggered. So, the resulting conformation in Gauche. Then, tautomerism is exhibited by, there are many questions in JE which are asked based on tautomerism. So, as I told you, the condition for tautomerism is presence of alpha hydrogen atom, right. So, tautomerism is exhibited by this. You can see that this is enol form. Right, you can see that this is in our form. How this is double bond in and this is alcohol all. So, right, so if we shift this back, this here and hydrogen there, so of course you are going to get pH, then CH2 and then CH double bond O. Right, yes, this is a keto form, it will show tautomerism. Here we can show tautomerism, but the resulting enol will be highly unstable because now then there will be a double bond here, right, single bond OH. So now this carbon will be sp hybridized, that is not a favorable situation. So this molecule cannot show tautomerism despite having alpha hydrogen atom. This, yes, here you can remove one alpha hydrogen atom, here one alpha hydrogen atom will migrate, right, here one alpha hydrogen will migrate. So what you will have? this like this OH and this double bond and like this resource in all it will form so yes it will show tautomerism similarly it will show this side and it will show tautomerism with this alpha hydrogen atom so basically right that will be OH and that will be OH so catechol it will be right 
so a c and d these three molecules will show tautomerism uh, this will form keto and this will form enol and this will form enol but this cannot show tautomerism right then the next the correct order of basicities of the following compounds remember that the basic strength you can check by many ways actually so basic strength either you can check by the electron density greater the electron density on the donor atom greater will be the basic strength or a very simple uh, and logical reason basic strength is directly proportional to the stability of conjugate acid the stability of conjugate acid right now please notice that here in one there is resonance stabilization right i already told you that uh, whenever you see stability always look for uh, the effects in order of aromaticity resonance hyperconjugation and inductive right so you can notice clearly that in first molecule there is resonance stabilization right so when this molecule uh, accepts a proton which nitrogen will accept a proton you might think that this nitrogen will accept a proton but no this nitrogen will accept a proton because it can disperse its positive charge by way of resonance right so ch3 c double bond nh nh2 right so this nitrogen will be more uh, basic so if you give it a proton right it will acquire positive charge and it can immediately disperse this positive charge right you can draw the resonance structure right so this is resonance stabilized the conjugate acid is very stable right this is base and its conjugate acid is a uh, very uh, stable so this will be most basic here right so first will be most basic here so out of these now out of option 2 and 3 of course this is a secondary amine right greater you know stabilization and this is primary amine so less so uh, 3 will be more acidic than uh, 2 right and 4 will be least acidic because actually amides are not uh, exactly uh, basic okay uh, did i say acidic amides are not exactly uh, basic they are amphoteric in nature right uh, because this is acetamide so you see this lone pair is not very much available for donation because of this resonance which is highly effective so here this is double bond and nh2 plus right so because of this lone pair amides act as slightly basic they are a weak bases and also you see the nitrogen is electronegative it has positive charge so these hydrogen also become slightly acidic so amides are actually amphoteric they are neither strong acids nor strong bases so that is going to be the weakest base here right that is the option number uh, B here, right? So the one, and then there is three, and then there is two, and then there is four. Okay. Now moving to the next question. Uh, this question is from you can say hydrocarbons, right? <clears throat> so which of the following reactions produces propane as a major product, right? So there are four reactions, and you have to guess in which of these reactions propane will be obtained as a major product, right? So this, you know, it's a haloalkane, CH3, CH2, CH2, Cl when it is reacted with zinc and dilute hcl so please remember whenever you react any haloalkane with zinc uh, in hcl or zinc in acid or zinc copper in you know uh, so these are basically reducing agents so what happens you just have to remove chlorine from here and put hydrogen right so what will be the product here so it will be ch3 then this would be ch2 and then this would be ch3 so yes it gives propane as one of the major products you can see here that this is an example of elimination reaction right dehalogenation reaction so ch3 this is a ch br and then this is ch2 br so when you heat this vicinal dibromide compound with zinc what happens dehalogenation happens and you do not get propane instead you get propene all right you do not get propane instead you get propene <coughs> similarly this this is an example of decarboxylation. You can see that we are heating the compound in presence of soda lime, NaOH and calcium oxide. So what happens here? 
सोडियम सॉल्ट ऑफ कार्बोक्सिलिक एसिड वेन यू हीट दम इन प्रेजेंस ऑफ सोडा लाइम दे लूज अ मॉलिक्यूल ऑफ सीओ टू राइट सो वट हैपन्स दिस सीओ टू इज लॉस्ट अगेन दिस कार्बन रिसीव अ हाइड्रोजन सो वट हैपन्स वेन एवर यू हैव अ कार्बोक्सिलेट अनायन राइट आर सी एन ए इफ यू रिएक्ट दिस रिएक्शन राइट इफ यू रिएक्ट दिस रिएजेंट सो यू गेट आर एच दैट्स वॉट हैपन्स इन डी कार्बोक्सिलेशन रिएक्शन सो यू विल गेट सी एच थ्री देन दिस वुड बी सी एच टू एंड दिस वुड बी सी एच टू राइट सी ओ माइनस बट सी ओ माइनस इज लॉस्ट एंड कार्बन रिसीव अ हाइड्रोजन सो अगेन वी गेट प्रोपेन एज अ मेजर प्रोडक्ट सो इन दिस केस ऑल्सो प्रोपेन विल बी ऑप्टेन एज मेजर प्रोडक्ट Let us come to the second. Uh, this uh, last option, CH3, CH2, CH2, CuNa reactant is same, but this time this is Kolbe's electrolysis reaction, right? And what happens in Kolbe's electrolysis reaction is that first this CO2 is lost, right? So there are three carbons in a straight chain. Now this radical is formed, and this radical combines with another radical. And what do you have here is again three carbon is straight chain. So basically, what do you get here is N hexane, right? what do we get the product an hexene and not the propane so the options in which propane is obtained as a product is a and c all right moving to the next question which one of the following alkenes when treated with hcl yields majorly an anti markovnikov product so normally you would see that <clears throat> when you react an alkene with hcl this is a markovnikov addition right but you would think under what condition can they give anti markovnikov so the logic is very simple you have to figure out the most stable carbocation that's it right because you know markovnikov addition relies on the most stable carbocation so here you have to see the most stable carbocation now what is markovnikov addition markovnikov addition is that in which the positive part of the addendum goes to that carbon which already has greater number of hydrogen atoms for example if i see this cl ch double bond ch2 right this carbon has one hydrogen and this carbon has two hydrogen now if we were to add hcl out of which obviously h plus will add first so markovnikov rule says that the positive part that is h plus it will go to the carbon which already has greater number of hydrogen atoms that is it should form this carbocation and yes this carbocation is slightly stabilized by the resonance of the chlorine although not so much but yes okay and then uh, <coughs> chlorine attacks there now what do you think in which case if i do the markovnikov addition i will get the less stable carbocation so let me tell you that there are many cases uh, no2 if it is joined if cyanide group is joined if cf3 group is joined so in these cases the formation of carbocation as per markovnikov rule will not give you a favorable outcome right so cf3 ch double bond ch2 if i draw the carbocation as per markovnikov rule that is i add hydrogen here on the carbon which already has greater number of hydrogen atoms so now the positive charge will be on the carbocation which is immediately joined to cf3 now you guys know that cf3 is a very powerful electron withdrawing group right there are three fluorine atoms joined to the carbon so now this carbocation is less stable instead we will do anti markovnikov addition we will add hydrogen on this carbon we will add hydrogen on this carbon right ch2 and uh, which will lead to the positive charge on this carbon now obviously this positive charge this carbocation not very much stable but at least it is away from this electron withdrawing group which is making it even more electron deficient right so in this option d the markovnikov addition will not lead to the more stable carbocation so this reaction will go uh, will give you the anti markovnikov product right then this question ozonolysis is a very commonly asked reaction in j so please uh, thoroughly uh, prepare this reaction ozonolysis uh, study this reaction the number of optically active products obtained from the complete ozonolysis of the given compound so what happens in the ozonolysis all the carbon carbon double bonds of alkenes they undergo cleavage right so please remember when an alkene undergoes ozonolysis all the carbon carbon double bonds that are present in the alkene they will uh, lead to the formation of product so this bond will break here and the formation of product is very easy you just have to put oxygen right you just have to put oxygen if the carbon is having a hydrogen it will give you aldehyde in uh, ozonolysis followed by reductive cleavage 
if the carbon does not have a hydrogen it will give you ketone what i'm trying to say is that uh, ch3ch double bond c ch3 ch3 now if you have to do the ozonolysis of this molecule then uh, it's very simple right it's very simple you will break this bond you will put one oxygen here one oxygen here this carbon has a hydrogen so it will give you aldehyde which is acetaldehyde all right and this carbon it did not have any hydrogen so it will give you ketone right so this is a short trick that you can use to uh, to draw the product of those analysis reactions right so you break this double bond put one oxygen here this is ch3cho of course it will not be optically active they are asking optically active so there has to be a chiral carbon right so now this will be cho you can see that this will be cho again bond will break here and uh, this will be cho right this will be cho yes so this carbon which was earlier uh, chiral it is no longer chiral right because yes it is joined to one hydrogen methyl but now on uh, the remaining two groups are uh, formyl group cho it is no longer chiral similarly this is formyl group cho and the bond breaks here this is formyl group cho again this carbon is no longer chiral and uh, this will give you ch3cho so there is actually no product in this reaction which has chirality so the correct answer would be zero all right this question a very good question on this reaction right concept so the reaction of ch3 ch double bond ch and oh with hbr what do you think is the major product here right so hbr so there are two uh, moieties in this reaction carbon double bond carbon and oh so supposedly both react with hbr right because we have learned that alcohols uh, react with hbr so to be a master of organic chemistry first thing you guys have to do is remember all the reactions on your fingertips right now that might be a difficult thing to do in the beginning but please understand uh, if the mechanism is important go through the mechanism otherwise learn the reaction what is the reactant what is the reagent what is a the product then write those uh, reactions on a uh, you know your rough notebook at least two three times so that you are able to remember the reaction you are able to recall a reaction when you see it okay so alcohols react with hbr they give bromoalkane nucleophilic substitution reaction and carbon double bond carbon also react with hbr this is markovnikov addition right and it also gives you bromoalkane so this will undergo markovnikov addition of hbr that is fine but please remember phenols don't react with hbr right phenols don't react with hbr because the phenolic hydroxide it's a very poor leaving group phenolic hydroxide it's a very poor leaving group right because of the greater electronegativity of the carbon to which oxygen is joined and also that carbon oxygen bond has partial double bond character right so what happens this phenolic oh will not react with hbr now this double bond will react and in markovnikov manner right so now you can think that which carbocation is more stable so ch3 ch if i attach hydrogen here so positive charge will come here right now you can see that this positive charge is very stable why is this positive charge is stable because it is stabilized by resonance right because it is stabilized by resonance and also there is an oh group right because it is stabilized by resonance and also there is an oh group all right now bromine will attack here h plus has already joined now bromine will attack here and it will form this so this will be ch3 then ch2 then ch br then benzene ring and then oh so ch3 uh, ch2 and then ch right because this carbocation is more stable br and then oh so this will be the correct answer right please remember phenolic oh will not react with hbr alcohols do then the next question <clears throat> rather is even the number of sp2 hybrid orbitals in a molecule of benzene right so you guys know that benzene looks like this all right so 1 2 3 there are six carbon atom there are six hydrogen atom there are three pi bonds so you can notice that 
each carbon in uh, benzene it is sp2 hybridized now obviously if an atom is sp2 hybridized it will have three sp2 hybrid orbitals right because that's what is the meaning of sp2 hybridization that one s and two p orbital they combine to form three sp2 hybrid orbitals right and there are six carbon atoms in benzene so there would be a total of 18 sp2 hybrid orbitals in a molecule of benzene so the number of sp2 hybrid orbitals in a molecule of benzene that would be 18 okay this question these kind of questions are very common in je based on the reactivity order of the uh, substituted benzenes the increasing order of the reactivity of the following compounds towards electrophilic aromatic substitution so you have to see the nature of the group that is joined to the benzene ring now please remember that if the atom that is joined to the benzene ring if it has a lone pair right if it has lone pair it will be an electron donating group it will be an electron donating group and such a compound will be more reactive than benzene such a compound will be more reactive than benzene all right so please always remember if the atom joined to the benzene ring if it has lone pair either it's neutral or negative charge but if it has lone pair then it will be an electron donating group and such a compound will be more reactive than benzene now this is not applicable to halogens this is not applicable to halogens why why because in case of halogens their minus i effect dominates in terms of the reactivity right orientation is controlled by the resonance effect so halogens are orthon para directors but because of the high electronegativity their minus i effect uh, controls the uh, reactivity right orientation is controlled by the resonance so in except halogens if any atom has lone pair then it will be more reactive then such a compound will be more reactive than benzene and if the atom is multiply bonded to a more electronegative atom then such a compound will be less reactive than benzene because it will be electron withdrawing group it will be electron withdrawing group and such a compound will be less reactive than benzene right such a compound will be less reactive than benzene so now you can notice so chlorobenzene is actually less reactive than benzene methyl is slightly donating right because it donates through hyperconjugation you guys know there are three alpha hydrogen atom so it will be more reactive i think second will be most reactive what about cocs3 it is an electron withdrawing group because cocs3 uh, fulfills this condition where the atom which is joined to benzene ring is multiply bonded to a more electronegative atom so this uh, third will be least reactive right uh, so second would be most reactive then third will be least reactive and first will be moderately you know it will be in the middle because chlorobenzene is actually slightly less reactive than benzene right so second most and then first and then third right so second first and uh, third so this will be the correct answer right then this question poly substitution is a major drawback in which of these reactions so friedel crafts alkylation or rimmer timmen reaction or friedel crafts acylation or acetylation of aniline let us see these reactions in detail what happens in friedel crafts alkylation so basically this is benzene right when you carry out the friedel crafts alkylation what group is introduced an alkyl group now obviously the resulting product is more stable right resulting product is more stable why because alkyl groups are slightly electron donating right alkyl groups are slightly electro electron donating so the next electrophile it is more likely to attack on the product than the reactant right so when benzene undergoes friedel craft alkylation and some of the benzene rings are converted to the product you know so what happens now this undergoes further substitution this undergoes further substitution and you are likely to get a mixture of ortho and para substituted product so poly substitution is a major problem in friedel crafts alkylation what happens in the other reactions in rimmer timmen reaction friedel craft acylation and acetylation of aniline let us see them in rimmer timmen reaction this is oh right 
and you guys know that we reacted with chloroform KOH followed by hydrolysis and acidification. So that gives us salicylaldehyde. Now please note that CHO is an electron withdrawing group. That means phenol was reactive, but when the product of Raymatiman reaction was obtained, salicylaldehyde now has an electron withdrawing group. So actually this CHO has made the product less reactive. So poly substitution will not be a major problem here. Then the reaction was Friedel-Craft acylation. What happens in Friedel-Craft acylation? We react benzene with either acid chloride or acid anhydride and the product is an aromatic ketone uh, like this C double bond O NR. So again this is an electron withdrawing group. That means when benzene is converted to the ketone via Friedel-Craft acylation the product is less reactive. So of course benzene is more likely to react. That means this compound will definitely not undergo poly substitution. Then the last case acetylation of uh, aniline. So aniline itself is very electron rich because nitrogen is a very good you know electron donor. So what happens but when you acetylate it so NH C double bond O and then CH3. So do you notice the electron pair is now involved in resonance. Now the electron pair on nitrogen in aniline is involved in resonance with the carbonyl group. So again this compound has become much less reactive. So again it will not undergo poly substitution. So that is how uh, we you know explain how Friedel-Craft alkylation is a reaction that uh, involves the problem of poly substitution. Next question aromaticity anti aromaticity is a very important concept. Which of the following molecules in pure form is R unstable at room temperature right. So what do you think? Let me tell you the order of stability meanwhile you decide. So order of stability is aromatic compounds then non aromatic compounds and then anti aromatic compounds right aromatic compounds are most stable than non aromatic compounds and anti aromatic compounds now you can see here these two carbon are sp3 so definitely this is non aromatic compound right non aromatic compounds are neither very stable nor very unstable this is a famous compound right cyclobutadiene it's anti aromatic why because it is cyclic it is planar okay it is conjugated and it has four uh, pi electrons so this you know that if your pi electrons fit in this formula 4n plus 2 then the compound will be aromatic if uh, the pi electrons fit in this formula 4n pi electrons then it will be anti aromatic so this is unstable this also is unstable friends right how you see this is a cyclic it's conjugated it's planar and it has four pi electrons two here two here so four pi electrons so this compound which is a ketone it's also uh, anti aromatic and very unstable so they're asking about unstable so b is unstable and c is unstable what about d d is aromatic how you see all the seven carbons are planar sp2 hybridized it's cyclic planar conjugated and it has uh, six pi electrons right which fits in the formula of 4n plus 2 n being 1 right so this is your uh, highly stable uh, molecule so the correct answers are option b and c so if you were to ask like uh, which is the most stable one right d and b and c are less stable and a has intermediate stability then this question it's my favorite question on electrophilic aromatic substitution it was asked in je right 2010 and uh, you have to there are three reactant molecules p q and r and you have to predict that in each compound where will the nitro group enter in the major product right you can read the question take your time the compounds p q and s were separately subjected to nitration using this nitrating mixture of hno3 and h2so4 the major product formed in each case respectively is okay so what will be the correct answers option a b c and d these are given so let us discuss this you can pause the video try to solve this question right come back and check the answer or let us discuss it so this has ch3 group this is carboxylic group this is electron withdrawing group right and methyl is electron donating group so please always remember if there is an electron donating 
on electron withdrawing group, the electron donating group controls the substitution. If there is less powerful electron donating and more powerful electron donating group, then the more powerful electron donating group controls the substitution, right? So, methyl will control the substitution. That means uh, the incoming electrophile will enter either at ortho position or para position. So, this is ortho, this is ortho, para position is blocked, right? Para position is blocked. So, nitro group will either come here or here. So, option A could be the answer, right? Option B cannot be the correct answer and option C and D, they can also be the correct answers, right? Because nitro group will enter at either of the ortho position. Now, let us discuss this. Here you see, this is methyl slightly electron donating by hypoconjugation and this is OCH3. It's very powerful electron donating group, right? So, now OCH3 will control substitution. Both are ortho and para directors. Right, but because OCS3 is more powerful electron donating group because it donates by resonance. So now the incoming electrophile NO2 will enter at ortho position with respect to OCH3. Right. So this one cannot be the correct answer. Option A is ruled out. The NO2 will be ortho with respect to OCH3. This is already ruled out. Right. And yeah, so A and B they are ruled out. Now let us see C and D. Here you can check that this benzene is attached to CO and this benzene is attached to oxygen which has lone pairs. So as earlier I told you this will be deactivated, right? Any atom joined to the benzene ring, if it is multiply bonded to more electronegative, it will be electron withdrawing. So this benzene ring is less reactive, right? This methyl doesn't make it more reactive, right? Because there is already a powerful electron withdrawing group. Now if we think about this, then oxygen is electron donor. Right, so it makes it more stable. So this benzene ring is more reactive. Now again, the incoming electrophile can enter at either ortho and para position. But as you can see here, we have a very bulky group at uh, ortho position. So definitely electrophile will enter at meta position, right? So this will be the correct answer, right? Right, so OH controls here, OCS3 controls here and here this O controls. So this will be the correct answer. So I hope you guys understood this. Then this reaction, it, this question, uh, it involves four reactions actually among the following the number of reactions that produce benzaldehyde. So benzaldehyde is an aromatic aldehyde without alpha hydrogen atom. So in which of these reactions do you think benzaldehyde is? formed as a product. Do you remember this reaction? Benzene, carbon monoxide, HCl in presence of anhydrous AlCl3 or CuCl. So this is gatterman cost reaction, if you guys remember, right? This is gatterman cost reaction, yes, carbon monoxide and HCl, they actually in situ, they form formaldehyde, uh, this for chloride, which gives you benzaldehyde. That is the correct answer, guys. This reaction is also there in NCRT book. Second is this benzyl chloride. Benzyl chloride, if you react it with, you know, water at high temperature, so substitution because haloalkane and water is a weak nucleophile. So this will be OH and OH, right? Both chlorine will be substituted by OH groups. Now, you guys know that geminal Diols are unstable, a carbon with 2 H groups is unstable. So this will uh, be followed by elimination of water, dehydration. So again, we, what will be left with? Benzene, CHO, again benzaldehyde. So that will also be the correct answer. In third, this is Rosenmann reduction, right? Acid chlorides, when you react them with hydrogen in presence of palladium barium sulfate. So that is Rosenmann uh, reduction. Again, Cl goes away and partial reduction leads to the formation of aldehyde. So this will also give benzaldehyde because this is Rosenmann reduction. Then Dibol H is a very popular reducing agent, moderately uh, powerful reducing agent. So whenever you have ester, right, whenever you have ester and you react it with Dibol H, diisobutyl aluminum hydride, then the bond breaks here, you have one aldehyde and the alkoxy moiety departs as alcohol, right? So again, yes, so if you are taking uh, this methyl benzoate, so of course, uh, bond will break here and you will get benzene and then CHO, right? And the 
other product will be methanol muh okay so all these four reactions are going to lead to the formation of benzaldehyde so very good question to revise these four reactions so that's all in this video i'll be back tomorrow again with the, the next three chapters that is haloalkanes and haloarenes alcohols phenols and ethers and aldehydes ketones and carboxylic acids right till then take care bye bye